Wallahi, I will not come to your school tomorrow. And then I changed my mind. Expiation, free a slave. And it goes on and everything in Islam, free a slave, free a slave, free a slave. Does Islam promote slavery? Islam promotes freedom for slavery, but by living in our houses and looking at, we, at how we treat them and looking at how we worship Allah Azza wa Jal, this would make them accept Islam voluntary because there is no compulsion in religion. And that is why the Prophet said in the authentic hadith, I am astonished, I am amazed of people being dragged to paradise in chains. Who would be dragged in paradise in chains? Everybody goes to paradise willingly. The Prophet is giving us a metaphor. Because these prisoners of war, they were enslaved, so they were in chains. And these chains made them accept Islam and hence enter paradise as if they were dragged into it. So this is not our topic, but you have to clarify things because when people talk to you about Islam and you don't know the beauty of the religion, you will feel inferior, you will feel weak. So, yeah, so I'm, I'm sorry, yes, Islam promotes slavery. No, it's not like this. And always turn the tables on their heads. Not physically, but any, so that they would say, oh, a terrorist is putting the tables on their head now, we have wounds, we're dying. Always turn the tables on them by asking them to look into their own books, their own religions, and they'll find slavery being bought, sold, not through jihad, through any means. As long as you can capture someone and sell it, then this is permissible. In Islam, alhamdulillah, it is the greatest religion. And if you study it, you know why. So I have a slave. And my slave, I gave him 100,000 uh, rupees or dollars. And I tell him, go and trade with it and bring me the profit. It's my money. He makes money, he makes profit, people give him tips, and he's getting richer. So now I want to sell him. So a buyer comes, and he buys him. And after he buys him, I, the owner, come to collect what he owns, because everything he owns, the suit, the watch, the car, the pen, the suitcase, everything is mine. So after the man bought the slave, I come to collect my things. And he says, no, 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 no. I bought everything. What are you doing? He said, no, no, the money is mine. The shop is mine. The car is mine. The watch is mine. So the guy says, no, I bought the whole thing. Uh, this is not what we have agreed upon. The prophet is telling us, now I'm going to clarify this issue. If someone buys a slave, then the money that the slave has goes all to the previous owner, unless there is what? A condition. This is what makes selling and buying in the halal. And that is why when I go into contract with you, many times we have partners, they have problems, they have a lot of dispute. Why? Because it was not written down, it was not clarified. After six months, yes, yeah, but, yeah, but I want to have my share. No, I have to have increase. It's all in black and white. So the condition is very important. And that is why the Prophet says, Islam, the money belongs to the previous owner unless the buyer makes it a condition. So how much you're selling your slave? $10,000. Okay, but I will buy it with everything that the slave has. The seller would say, oops, no. If this is the case, I'm selling him for $100,000 because he's got my car, he's got this and that. And then everything is clear. When it's not clear, then by default, the seller, the previous owner, goes and gets everything that there needs to be delivered. Now, before going to the following hadith, I'm afraid we have a short break. And afterwards, inshallah, we will open the floor for questions and we'll be right back. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm Dr. Bilal Phillips, and you're watching Peace TV. Where truth is hidden, and misleading quotations create confusion. Where truth is hidden, lack of knowledge and wisdom cause upheaval and commotion. 
where truth is hidden, manipulated scriptures and twisted facts emerge. This very hidden truth creates false propaganda, mayhem, chaos, disorder and turmoil in our lives and the world order. But is there anyone with courage and wisdom? What is the truth and who has the courage to expose it? Because it's your right to know the truth. Right. Watch Truth Prevail and Lies Perish in Truth Exposed by Dr. Zakir Naik every Saturday to Thursday at 9 p.m. and repeat telecast at 7.30 a.m. Saudi Arabia on Peace TV. Scientific notions in the glorious Quran are among its endless aspects that can testify for the divine nature of this noble book. These scientific notions are probably the best address to the people of our time. I am Zaghloun al -Najjar. Please join me in this program to discuss some aspects of the scientific notions in the glorious Quran. <laughs> Appreciate the word-to-word -word authenticity of scientific notions and proven facts mentioned in the glorious Quran 1400 years ago in Scientific Notions in the Glorious Quran, next on Peace TV. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back. So, many times we have partners, they have problems, they have a lot of dispute. Why? Because it was not written down, it was not clarified. After six months, yes, yeah, but, yeah, but I want to have my share. No, I have to have increase. Yeah, it's all in black and white. So the condition is very important, and that is why the Prophet says, as Islam, the money belongs to the previous owner unless the buyer makes it a condition. So, how much you're selling your slave? $10,000. Okay, but I will buy it with everything that the slave has. The seller would say, oops, no. If this is the case, I'm selling him for $100,000. Because he's got my car, he's got this and that. And then everything is clear. When it's not clear, then by default, the seller, the previous owner, goes and gets everything that there needs to be delivered. Any questions regarding slavery, regarding selling farms? Yes, Akhi. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam. The hadith says that he who buys a slave, his property belongs to the one who sold him. So the property is of the slave. So why is it like that the, uh, the property belongs to the one who sold him? The hadith of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam clarifies this. The Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, anything that a slave owns belongs to his master. So you have sometimes people owning a lot of slaves and sending them to work, not like employees. So I have a trustworthy slave. His name is Abdullah. Abdullah, take this 5,000 riyals. It's a capital. Go and work. So he goes and invests it, invests it. And he makes it a hundred thousand, a million, five millions. As a master, I tell him, give me a million, give me two, it's mine. And the man is keeping something and he's uh, investing it and he is yeah, and he making profit out of it. At the end of the day, he's still a slave. And whatever he owns is actually belonging to his master. And that is why he cannot perform Hajj. It's not mandatory upon him. Praying Friday, he does not pray Friday, mandatory like 
everyone else, a free person, and so on and on. There are differences between that. Yes, Akhi. Assalamualaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam. My question to you is that if you are a slave, he is a non-Muslim, and then he reverts to Islam, is it compulsory on us to free him? Very good question. If we have a slave who is a non-Muslim, and then he accepts Islam, is it mandatory upon us to free him? And the answer is no. Because him and his descendants are still slaves, whether he accepts Islam or not. Can we enslave a Muslim? The answer is never. But if he's been enslaved as a non-Muslim and then he accepts Islam, you're highly recommended to free him. But it is not mandatory. You can keep him. And the companions had Muslim slaves. Even the imams of the schools of thought had Muslim slaves. Abdullah ibn Umar ibn Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him. His famous slave was Nafi' Mawla ibn Umar. And Nafi' was one of the great scholars of Islam. And he was a slave. So where a lot of the scholars of Islam, they were all slaves. And some were freed and some were not. Okay, let's uh, take a question from the Sheikh. Orchard, mango orchard is sold for a period of 10 years. The risk is spread over a period of 10 years. So how is it validates vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the sunnah of the Prophet? No, uh, this is something that goes beyond my knowledge. If someone sells mango tree after being impregnated and it takes 10 years to give the fruit. No, I, what I mean to say, the output is on year-to-year -year basis, but it is sold oh, for 10 years. Oh, if it's on yearly basis, we said that the first harvest, if not conditioned, the first harvest goes to the previous owner, the seller. Only one, but not every year. So the first one that he had impregnated produces in one year. The following year, you have to impregnate it again. And in the third year, and the fourth year, the first year that he worked hard on it, the harvest is his. Uh, well, uh, so sorry, my question is with regards to the Prophet's hadith where he said that the fruit should be yellow or ripe, then sold. Very good. Okay, that's a very valid question. Now, the brother is saying, we discussed it before, that the Prophet forbade, alayhi salatu salam, selling of fruit until they ripe. And he was asked how it is ripe. He said, becoming yellow or red. Now here, you're saying that the previous owner, he just impregnated it, and yet he is worthy of having it or keeping it. The issue is different. In the first hadith, what is forbidden to buy the fruit before it is ripe. In the second hadith, the buyer is buying the whole farm, not the fruit. He's buying the tree, he's buying the land, he's buying the streams. And therefore, he is not being fooled because the first one, I buy the fruit that is not ripe. After two months, maybe it doesn't become ripe. Maybe it has a disease or a snow falls and it dies. So I lost my money. In the other case, no, I'm buying the whole thing. So the fruit is part of the tree itself and part of the farm. And there is no problem in that, inshallah. Uh, Sheikh, my question is related to my fellow brother that you said that the uh, fruits must be ripe before they are being sold. But there are certain fruits, you know, which we like mango. We can have a green mango as well as yellow, the sweet one. And even in the Gawa, what you call it in Hindi is Peru. So even we have a green and yellow. So what's the ruling on that? Okay, that's a, a valid question. Now, regarding the mangoes, whether they're green or yellow, Green mangoes are ripe, right? So you sell them and you eat them. Th then the hadith of the Prophet is not only restricted to yellow and red. For example, green apples. If you have a tree of green apples and I'm waiting, inshallah, tomorrow it's becoming red. So tomorrow it's becoming yellow. I cannot sell it. It's green. No, the color is not intended. What was meant is when it is ripe, ready to be consumed and eaten, then it's permissible for you to sell. So I hope this yani, clarifies the issue. Yes, Akhi. Assalamualaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam. Suppose we own a slave, which is a female. If I'm the owner of a slave, which is a female. Yes. 
aren't hijab conditions applied? Or does the hijab condition apply to them? The answer is no. A female slave to her master is like any of his wives. So the hijab does not apply. Any questions? Yes. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. Can you keep a slave who has not yet attained the age of puberty? The answer is yes, because keeping a slave, buying a slave, giving a slave, it's like any property you have. A slave is part of your property. You can sell it, you would inherit it if you die, and you can give it as a gift. But again, this is not the topic we should be focusing on in the sense that slavery does not exist anymore due to the weakness of the Muslims and due to not abiding by Islam and the Quran and the Sunnah. So let's keep it yani, simple. Yes, Kareem. As you said that the right of retaining the fruits is for the seller. So does he have the right to increase the price and tell the buyer that if you're buying the fruits, then I increase the price? This is a very good question. And this can only be applicable at the bargaining stage. The buyer and the seller. He comes to me and says, I'd like to buy your farm. And I say, I'll sell it for a million. He says, but I have a condition. I'd like to have the fruit. I said, ah, in this case, I'll sell it for a million point five. He said, no, you have no right. He said, yes, I have. We did not make the agreement binding. We're still in the bargaining stage. So if the deal is done, meaning that, he says, yes, okay, I'll buy it for a million. Here's the check. Okay, and I say, I accept, and we separate. A few days later, he comes and says, yay, I want the fruit. What would I say to him? I would say to him that the deal is done. The prophet said, Ali Islam, that the fruit are mine because I did the work. So uh, I didn't know, sorry. The Prophet ﷺ's hadith is the final answer and it is the ruling and the verdict that we should follow and nothing would affect that and Allah Azza wa knows best. This is all the time we have. Until we meet next time, fi amanillah, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.